Hello, and welcome to Strange Dominions, a show where we try and uncover the unseen, the unheard, the unknown, and the unknowable. I am your host, Octavian Graves. Tonight, we are speaking with Lindsay, who has had a plethora of strange occurrences throughout her life. This will be a two-part episode, with part two being a Patreon episode exclusive. We speak on ghosts, shadow people, UFOs, and so much more. If you would like to become a patron, it's only $4 a month, you get extra content, merchandise, and the ability to be on the show. If you have seen something strange or unusual, such as a cryptid, UFO, spirit, and anything in between, send me an email at strange dominions podcast at gmail.com that is strange dominions podcast at gmail.com and with that let's get into the episode and we are here with Lindsay. how are you doing Lindsay? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. I'm glad you were able to come on the show. This is really exciting. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Glad to finally get to tell some of this stuff. Yeah, of course. So you emailed me after hearing me on Strange Familiars and Where Did the Road Go, right? Yes. Um, actually, I was honestly just trying to help you out with some of that grimoire magic stuff and give yeah. you some ideas. And I didn't know it was going to turn into this. Well, no, I really appreciated that email because you did give me some ideas. And I had heard people... Um, talk about the Book of Oberon in relation to investigating some of the more esoteric aspects to the paranormal, and so. Um, but yeah, I re- I'm I'm gonna get dig into that some more. But I'm very excited about these experiences you've had. Um, so wherever you want to start, go right ahead. Okay. Well, um, we're gonna just start at the beginning. Um, so I am one of those people that have a very early memory um i have memories when i was just a toddler um so this happened um when i was still sleeping in my crib and uh well technically i would normally co-sleep with my mom most of the time but this was a pretty particular night um my mom had gotten some advice you know unsolicited advice from her friends about how she should crypt train me finally and it was the cried out method of course which is what's gonna lead to why no one came to my rescue here um so i was in the crib which is unusual and i remember i remember seeing something and standing up and holding on to the crib rail and so to give you an idea of the way the room is set up uh, the crib was against the wall with um, the door to the right. Then across would be the window to the outside. And then to the right of the window um, on that wall is the closet. And so in that space, in that corner between the window and the closet, it was very dark. Um, and we also had the door to my room. This is important. I, I swear I'm not just describing this for you know, randomly, the door to the room was cracked at a 45 degree angle. So the light from the hallway was cutting the room between my crib and that dark corner. So out of that dark corner is when I saw my first shadow person. And the way it looked was that it was, I could see um, its upper torso sort of coming out of that shadow. Um, so I know I've heard people on other shows talk about portals and things like that. I don't know. I don't know if the shadow itself was like a portal or something, but I couldn't see legs. It was just that upper torso and it was like reaching out with its hands like this towards me. Um, and the way I've always described it is um, if you think of like those old, like a Roman statue, that's just like, you know, the way like the eyes are carved into the statue. Mm-hmm. I could almost see that, uh, like I could almost see, like sort of like a shape where eyes would be, like you know, indentations. Sorry, like indentations of features. Yes, yeah, something like that. I mean, not just indentation. It, like obviously, the nose stuck out. You know, it wasn't flat. It was very three dimensional. But yeah, it just you know, I, there was no hair or anything. It was it was just like, um, you know, just like this head, this torso, it was very masculine, like 
I describe as like um like an so athletic like defined. field. It wasn't like nebulous or it was like defined. It was very defined. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was it was solid. It was like Vanta black. You know, I describe as like an athletic build, like not muscular, but not overweight, not too skinny. It was just yeah. And the way it was reaching out to me, like honestly, that I still maintain, like, I don't care if other people say they've had positive encounters or neutral encounters or whatever. This thing seemed like it, like it wanted to do me harm. Like, at least that's how I interpret it. Like it was terrifying. And I feel like the only reason why it couldn't go any further was because that light cut across the room. It could not pass through the light from the hallway. And I remember screaming my head off for my mom like just like terrified and she didn't come because we were doing the cried out method. And so I don't know what happened other than I must have fallen asleep at some point um, because the memory cuts out, you know, um, I told my mom about this when I was in college actually. And I told her, I was like, look, this is what happened. Like I still remember this. And she was like, well, I know that night you're talking about because you wouldn't stop crying. It was the only, and that's when she told me it was the only night we ever tried the cried out method with the crib and everything. And, you know, then she felt guilty and she gave me a $200 shopping spree. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was like, I was traumatized. You know, you can believe me or not about the shadow person, but I was absolutely traumatized enough. I still have that memory, you know? So that's, that's what happened with that one. And then, I don't know if you want me to just go on. Well, with, uh, there, so if yeah. you've heard me on where the road go, then you know that I've had three people. I've never had a shadow person experience, mm-hmm. but I've had three people who've seen shadow people. And then for some reason, cognitively recognized it as me. What? Yeah. I yeah. think I heard the one. But I didn't realize it was three yeah, so people. The first one was my, uh, my ex-girlfriend. We were like, we were sleeping at the time and yeah. I wake up to her like punching me in the ribs and she's like screaming at me and I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, you were just in the doorway, just your shadow. And you were just staring at me. Why were you doing that? I'm like, I've been in bed with you for eight hours. I don't know what you're talking about. And then my mother, a few weeks after that, um, tells me that, she woke up one night, she couldn't move, and she saw a shadow in the doorway, and she kept calling out my name because she thought it was me, and it didn't respond, oh. and then she just, I guess, it either walked away or she fell asleep. I don't know what happened after that. And then I had my friend Corey, who's actually been on the show, and he texted me or called me one day a few years ago and was like, hey, man, I just like took a nap. And while I was taking that, I woke up, and I couldn't move, and there was a shadow person sitting on my bed next to me, but it was you. Like... I recognized it as you. And That's I, so weird. Yeah, it's a really weird thing. I don't know why me, but I've never had a shadow person experience. Well, see, the thing that really, I guess, weirds me out is that every time anyone has ever told me their shadow person experience, no one's ever recognized it as, say, a person, unless it was right? like more of like a doppelganger experience or something. Or I, I swear there's another name for uh, those kind of things when you see someone that you know, but it's not them, not just doppelganger. It was on one. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I can't think of the word either. I'm, yeah. I, once I get in front of this microphone, my vac- my vocabulary just gets cut in half. I swear. Oh, no. Same, same. I'm <laughs> I'm just like the pressure of performing, of being mm-hmm. like recorded. It's it's intense. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting about the shadow person experience because A, mm-hmm. there was a um a barrier. That light yes. was like it was affected by the light. And I yeah. don't normally hear that. Normally when I hear shadow people experiences, nothing really seems to get in their way. I don't know. I mean, that was my interpretation no, yeah, as a child. It's possible. It just wasn't able to get out of whatever it was, you know, coming through. Like I said, its legs had not come through yet. Mm-hmm. It's also interesting but, because, as, I mean, how old were you with this? I mean, you're still in cribs. So, so a toddler. So I really don't know exact age. And my mom couldn't give me an idea either, but under two years old. So it's interesting because you hear a lot of times when children have these experiences because they don't have the cultural background for it. They don't Mm -hmm. realize like they don't think to be scared. Like it's not the first instinct instinct that comes to them, but you were terrified. This thing, I, I just, it just oozed like bad vibes. Like nefarious. Like, like, hell no. Yeah. 
Well, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And so, I mean, I've honestly, like, I've just had, and we're not going to talk about all of them tonight. Yeah, of but course. I'm going to have you back on the show for sure. No, <laughs> sure. Why not? But uh, yeah, I know. I just, I've had a lot of experiences throughout my childhood and like even up till now. So um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just, uh, I had quite a few things happen as a kid and I don't really, um, I can't even say like anything from like a religious standpoint either. Cause I was raised without any religions. Right. So. And we should mention here yeah. that, so you are a magical practitioner, correct? Yes. So yes. how many of these stories would you say are connected to that or like symptoms of that? I, it depends. Um, there are definitely some that I would say definitely are. I wasn't planning on necessarily getting into those. Oh no, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was. The ones I picked were honestly, I was trying to stay away from. Uh, oh, okay, those stories. that's fine. Well, yeah, it, it's just, um, you know, obviously I wasn't practicing as a child. Yeah, no, of know? course, yeah, yeah. I but that. um, you know, I do have some really good ones about a particular deck of tarot cards if we have time. Okay, sure. Yeah. But yeah, keep going. Whatever's next. Yeah, so um, we're going to roll right into um, a sleep paralysis story. This actually happened, this is another one that happened when I was pretty young. So we're saying about elementary school. I was I was pretty short, I remember at this time, because when I uh, stood up to see my mom later, uh, I was still like half her height, and she is not a tall woman. <laughs> so um, I woke up and... Uh, I was in my big girl bed at this time. So like I said, about elementary school, I woke up and I heard my name being called. I heard someone say like, Lindsay, Lindsay, you know, and at first I thought it was my mom, but like the more my brain kind of woke up the more, I realized I'm like, that's off. It sounds like a woman's voice, but it's not quite my mom's voice. Either way, like, you know, the instinct was to respond like, you know, Hey, I'm in bed, you know, whatever. And I found that like, I couldn't speak like I, I, and then I tried to like, you know, get out of bed and move. And I felt like, okay, I can't move. So of course, you know, that's terrifying. I hadn't ever heard of the term sleep paralysis before. This was, I, I had no point of reference, you know? So my only thought was like, okay, I have to get out of bed. I have to get to my mom. Like if something is wrong, you know, something's wrong with me. So my idea was, uh, and maybe it's because I did have a pet turtle, but like I rocked back and forth like a turtle on its back, you know, until I was able to roll out of bed and land on the carpet. And uh, as soon as I hit the ground, like I was able to move just fine again. But um, my voice still wasn't like back. Like I couldn't call back to my mom yet. So I was like, I don't know what's going on. I've got to just find her you know so i walk into the kitchen and my mom is making the sauce because you know we're italian so she's making uh the sunday sauce and i'm just like like okay yeah obviously this is I, no one can see what my mouth is doing but i'm like i'm trying to talk nothing's coming out um i kind of like stall for time by like getting a glass of water and you know drinking it and my voice did not come back because I drank water. It wasn't like a dry throat thing. It was just, I had to buy some time. And then I would like look to my mom. I'm like, Hey mom, were you calling my name? Like just like a few minutes ago, like when I was still in bed and she's like, no, I was just making sauce. So I don't, I don't know what, what was going on, but that was a uh, first time I've ever had like a sleep paralysis type experience. Right. Right. See, I'm, I'm, I've said this on a couple of different episodes and a few different shows that I never had a lot of, I didn't really have anything happen to me as a child. Like mm -hmm. I was devoid of, of weird occurrences until about like 15, 16 when I yeah. had that ghost tour incident. But one thing I do remember being probably six, seven, maybe even like into the 11, 12 range was mm -hmm. I would just be sitting in on my couch or in my room or uh, just somewhere in my mother's house, um, and I would just hear my name being called. Okay. But it wasn't by, like, it was, sometimes it was female voices, sometimes it was male voices, and sometimes it was, like, a weird unison of male and female voice together, just saying, like, just saying, like, my name, 
And yeah. it was really a weird thing. And I've never been able to explain it. And it was only ever in that house. Never, ever again um, at anyone else's house or anything like that. I mean, I did, there wasn't a time, mm. and I think I told this on an early episode of the show, where I was with um, a friend of mine and we were in my room playing uh, computer games. And someone, something said my name and he heard it. And he was like, hey man, your mom's calling me. And I'm like, dude, my mom's not home. We're home alone. We're going to be home alone for like another like three hours. He's like, well, is someone in the house? I'm like, I mean, I'll go look. I looked. There was nothing there. No one was in the house. It's kind of like the hallway ghost thing. Yeah. I was gonna tell you about. Yeah. So now in this house, like, was there anything special about this house? No. Or There was, I mean, I had a, I didn't have a rough childhood in the sense like, there, there was no, like, abuse or anything like that, but my home life at that time was not very stable. Mm-hmm. And so there may have been some kind of, like, uh, physical manifestation that came up from that, like, heavy emotional state that kind of pervaded that house. But other than that, not really. Oh, so, I okay, so I'm seeing a connection right here with us already. Okay. Like, I don't, not to throw my parents under the bus or anything, but. They, they fought a lot, so... Yeah, my uh, I mean, my parents yeah. got divorced when I was three years old, mm-hmm. and it was not, like, a very good divorce. It was a pretty messy one. Yeah, that's pretty traumatic. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's and I'm, like, laughing of, about wow. it. Yeah, that's the only thing that's ever really, you know, happened in that way. See, kind of same. Like, with my parents' house, um, they built it themselves right before I was born, so there's no history to that house, no history to that area. Like, there's... Nothing that you would typically like hear about in like some ghost show or anything, you know, mm-hmm. but my parents fought a lot. I won't say too much more because I love my parents. Yeah, I do too. Gonna, I do too. You know, not going to throw them under the bus, yeah, but um, and the, it, it, like the thing that I've, yeah. I'm not, I'm very much on the, the spirit model of things like the psychological mm-hmm. model. I, I don't really understand it enough to say that I'm like, you know, in that mindset. And so when people say like, you know, manifestation of trauma Mm. i don't mean to say that the events of my childhood took on a physical form what yeah my feeling is is that you know i'm an animist so spirits everywhere and i believe that for some of them for some reason they get attracted to trauma and things like that and so they'll come into areas that are like that house was new i like i was Mm -hmm. born in 95 and that house was built in 92 or 93 Mm -hmm. so there was i mean maybe it was like a because it was the woods before that like that neighborhood was built and so maybe it was like a genus loci that for some reason was attracted to the um the issues revolving around that area um but yeah i don't know yeah, no, I actually have a pretty similar model, to be honest. Um, okay. Like, I, I probably wouldn't think in most cases it'd be a genus loci, um, unless it, it was like a very neutral feeling. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like there I are just mean though, spirits. Some things, like sometimes yeah. there's spirits of place, just you know any kind of spirit. Yeah, I think there's. I think that when you have like that much negative, turbulent, emotional trauma going on that it does attract some parasitic type spirits yeah it's like a a lamp like a moth to the flame exactly yeah so i do feel like in some cases there may have been something like that going on at times but then you know some of my experiences have been so like neutral benign that like i would say say it more as just like yeah like some sort of land spirit that just happens to be in the area like nothing nothing wild nothing negative you know but yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, well, let's get into some more yeah. of the stories. Yeah, so um, kind of rolling right on. This one, I don't know if I even would call it sleep paralysis. It's re- it's reminiscent of like uh, the old hag syndrome, you know. But it just, uh, as you as you probably remember from my email, it takes a bit of a different turn. Um, oh yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm trying to think. So this would have been junior high ish because um when i was in seventh grade i met my friend john he's the one that turned me on to like getting into like all the llewellyn like wicca like neo-pagan stuff so i was already into that at this point um and just uh to set the stage um 
I had my dad's old rosary hanging off of my bedpost, not religious, just a goth, you know, <laughs> like I, I would wear it with some of my outfits. So, um, you know, but also like, sometimes I would utilize it, like even when I'm doing spell work, you know, I was, I was very eclectic. I picked up stuff, you know, from any particular path or yeah of course know, and like just yeah. go with whatever is uh, resonating with you at the moment so exactly yeah so um i was i was sleeping on my stomach which i used to do a lot at that age um i remember i just woke up and uh it was probably around like four or five a.m um and i only know that because i did look at the clock later which comes up in this story but um I just remember like feeling like I was being pinned to the bed about where my lower back is. And I was hearing in my ear, a sound like, like a wildcat. It was like, (laughs) like that. And you'd only be in one ear at a time. So it'd go back and forth between like my left and right ear. And like, obviously like, okay, I'm absolutely paranormal in stereo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, just like one at a time, like, and I didn't know (laughs) what the hell to think. Like, I was like, is there something like attacking me? Like, is this some kind of like evil spirit, whatever? I mean, I, I don't know, but I, I was, part of me was like terrified to look, you know, but the other part of me was like, I have to. And so like, I'm trying to move. And I realized that, you know, that's when I realized, like, I am pinned. Like, it's, it, and it felt heavy. Like, it wasn't like I just couldn't move. It was like I was being pushed into the bed by something, like, super heavy, you know? But I could move my head. I could move my arms. I could lift my chest up, you know? And I was able to, like, move my, like, legs to some degree. So, like, I Did it just myself. feel like you were being anchored? Yeah, like it was just like it was like something was sitting right there on my lower back. And that was the only part of me that was being that had that heavy thing on it, like a a weight, you know, but the rest of me was fine. I was able to move, you know, and so I was trying to reach the rosary because that was like my first instinct. You know, it's like, what do you do in a movie when something's like evil spirits attacking? You know, you got to like. Yeah, you know, so I was like, all right. So I had to actually like pull myself, you know, up so I could reach it. So I scooted myself a couple inches on that bed in order to grab the rosary on the bed stand. And of course, at that time, you know, I was like, oh, I'm not going to pray to, you know, God because I'm an atheist. So I'm like, oh, let's try some of these pagan deities that john introduced me to but you know none of that was like really working because i'm like i don't i mean not that i believe in anything but i don't i don't believe in any of them and these things were brand new to me you know and i it wasn't even praying to god honestly uh that finally did anything it's that what's that one prayer it's like and i walk through the valley of the shadow of death or something yeah I, I, i think is that a psalm Maybe you know that psalms are really like within grimoire magic yes that's a very big part of it i actually have a uh, Gemma gary's uh psalm book oh uh, nice my, yeah my friend liz gave it to me <laughs> so yeah because they're like chants they're almost like mantras yeah. Exactly. And that's, I think, what honestly did it because it was, it was a psalm. I wasn't praying to a deity, but I was, it gets you in like some kind of mindset, like a, like a trance, like it does something, you know? Well, that's why, um, you know, like I am not into the psychological aspect of chaos magic, but what I like about chaos magic is the idea mm -hmm. of breaking down your dogma and using whatever it works, regardless of how you feel about it. And so like Mm -hmm. if psalms work, man, use it. Well, yeah. There's no shame in it. My uh, my great grandmother on my mom's side, she would actually um, be the person in the neighborhood that people went to to remove the malocchio, 
And so um, she did utilize a lot of psalms when she did it. Like she would do like the oil and do like the crosses on your head and your hands and everything. But there were certain psalms, which unfortunately I don't know because my mother never bothered to learn. I only know the ones that are attached to my talismans, like my or mm-hmm. my um, my pentacles, because I have okay. the, uh, the second of Jupiter and the fourth of Mercury. So I know those psalms, but nothing else. Yeah, well, at least. At least you know those, hey? Yeah. You know, I mean, I have no idea which ones she used when she did it, but I was kind of hoping, you know, figure like the Gemma Gary book, like that's got some ones for basic like healing and Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But yeah, but she always utilized Psalms when she removed the Maloke off people. So I think, you know, it just makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Um, But yeah, that's, that's really all there was like to that story um you know i I eventually like after um after like i got it to go away and after i was able to fully move like that's when i reached out like for the clock and like i took the time and then i rolled over and of course the room was empty there was nothing there you know just just as you would expect in these sort of situations but you know maybe nothing there that you could physically perceive Nothing I could physically perceive, but yeah. also I think the song worked. It was okay, gone, good. you know. Yeah. I, obviously, I was able to roll over at that right. point. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that was pretty much how that one went. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm just grabbing some tea. Don't mind yeah, me. Yeah, no, that's fine. But um, yeah, I kind of wanted to uh, get into that really super long story before we go too much further. Go right ahead. Okay, so I have I even brought out my old diary for oh, you. Awesome. So yeah. Straight from the source. I, I know, and right on the next page from this story. Okay, right on the next page from this story is my type O negative ticket. Oh man, I'm so jealous. <laughs> God. Let's see, that was two thousand one. How mm-hmm. old were you? Six. <laughs> I was six years old. And I would have still loved to have gone to that show because I was already into this like weird music by that time because my dad was into it. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, so you got to start early from your Oh, parents. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You would have loved that concert because it was right after Halloween mm-hmm. and they absolutely trashed the entire venue like they gave us toilet paper and condiments and everything and we were throwing stuff all over the venue after the concert were, they, were still- they doing world coming down or are they doing um what's the the life is killing me album oh god i i remember they did songs from like a lot of them like i remember they did songs from um october rust and bloody kisses and all of that um i think they did world coming down i want to say i love that album i know a lot of people didn't really resonate with it but i would put it second to if if, um october rust is first that's second and then um bloody kisses is third for me i switch them i go october rust bloody Mm. kisses then world coming down okay yeah 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 but definitely (laughs) But yeah, so uh, this was sometime right before <laughs> before the typo negative concert to give you a perspective. Um, so yeah, I had a friend. Um, I, I'd known her since junior high, um, and I was sleeping over her house. And some interesting things uh, about this house is. It's in the neighborhood that's sort of like right behind my grandma's neighborhood. And so when my mom was growing up, this area where my friend's house was, was all forest. And my mom specifically said she used to go berry picking in this forest. So you can see where this is going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I think, I don't think things left. No, not at all. That area. No. So... Yeah, her um her house was built in like the eighties or something. Okay. So. Anyway, um, so I was sleeping over her house. Her parents, they were musicians. Uh, they were gonna do like a gig, you know. So we were gonna be home alone for the evening, and they were gonna come back sometime after we had fallen asleep, you know. So 
we started out in her room. We were just messing around. And this is back in the time when not every room of the house had internet, which is also important. Um, but my friend, she was also into magic and stuff, but she was doing like this whole like uh, Christo pagan, like kind of thing at the time. She was really into like, you know, angels but also medieval stuff and whatever and so she's sitting there like on the floor i'm sitting you know across from her and we're just goofing off and all of a sudden she gets really serious okay and uh she kind of like goes into like what i would call like a trance state sort of like where it's her but it's sort of not her like talking and she's just like Lindsay, you are going to be visited by an angel tonight and i immediately (laughs) start freaking out i'm just like what are you talking about like how is it going to visit me like is it going to just like you know like when you're doing like solomonic magic you know i'm like is it going to be there in corporeal form am i going to see this thing like is this going to be a be not afraid kind of situation right that's why, that's why I was like freaking out. I was like, what am I going to see? Like, or is it just going to like come to me in a dream? And so no big deal. Or like, yeah, am I going to have something just right there in front of me? Like in all of its glory, you know, and 5 million eyes. I, I had no idea. Like, and so Jen was just like, oh, I don't know. It's, it's a good thing. Like, you know, I, I can't remember her actual words, but like, she was just like, eh. and then shrugged it off and so i was just like i don't know what the hell was going on but i feel like that was not quite her speaking you know in that moment even though she remembered saying it she was just like yeah like i I, she's like i kind of felt like something was making me say that but she was like i don't know and she's like i don't have any further information for you so i'm already like in a state where i guess like i'm primed to like experience something because i'm you know i'm freaked out yeah you know? of course yeah so i'm trying to get my mind off of it and somehow we decided we were going to go play on the internet because that's what you did when you visit your friend's house and the only internet was on her parents computer in their bedroom so jen's room is at one end of the hall her parents room is at the opposite end so We walk down the hall into her parents' room and Jen goes in ahead of me and I kind of look over to like my left and I'm like, huh, there's like this really big, like dark green curtain, you know, the same kind of green as the walls and it's going from ceiling to floor. And I'm just like, that's that's really odd. I don't remember that there. So I'm like, Hey Jen, you know, I turned to her and like, what's behind that curtain like what you know because i'm thinking like is it like a closet or something like and and it was like pulled into like you know where like you have like the sash kind of pulling it but it was still covering that wall enough that like i couldn't see behind it and i just was like jen what's behind that curtain so she looks at me and she's like, what curtain are you talking about? So I turn around to point to it and there's not a curtain there. It's just the window. Like it's just a flat wall in her window. Like, when I was reading this story in the email you sent me, yeah. when I got to this part and this whole story, I was like, this has like Twin Peaks vibes. Oh God. This yeah. is very Twin Peaks. It's It's very Twin Peaks and it's very like, like fairy trickster something like going on too like you know if we were outside i would have sworn i would have gone pixie lad or something although i didn't know any of that at the time like i didn't i had not researched fairy lore that much so but yeah uh it was it was weird and we um we played on the computer kind of forgot about it you know but when we were done with the computer we went back to her room so we're back in the hall and to my left I don't is this going to be a theme where I keep saying things are to my left this is this is actually you know now I'm thinking about it, everything is to my left in this story um so anyway maybe that's something uh to Some my left, left hand path stuff in there <laughs> what was that left hand, left hand path stuff in there I think so I think so so um 
<laughs> to my left is a door. Okay. And this door sort of mirrors the uh, door to the spare room that's on the other side of the staircase. So I'd never seen this door before. I did, did not remember seeing it when we went to her parents' bedroom. So again, I'm like, hey, Jen, what is this door to? Like, what room is this? And Jen's like, what door are you talking about, Lindsay? So I turn around again and there's no door. And not only that, the wall between her parents' door and the staircase is way too narrow to even hold a door. It's like maybe a foot wide. So I'm like practically losing my mind here. Like what is going on? Um, and I'm still waiting for those angels to come up and say, be not afraid. <laughs> so I go back to her room. I, I don't know what we did. Like must've been like goofing off or reading or something until it was only bedtime. And uh, we, she only had like this really teeny tiny twin bed. So we had put the pillows and blankets on the floor. So we could sleep on the floor for the sleepover that way, you know, we could hang out and talk to each other. And um, I had the side that was closer to the window and she had the side that was just against the wall. And so, so you're lucky that your friend decided to sleep on the floor with you because I had a friend, he was like my best friend in elementary school. Whenever I spent the night at his house, I slept on the floor and he always slept in the bed. That's so rude. I know, right? I never really picked up on it. Like when I was that age, I was like, oh, you know, it's his bed, whatever. But I'm like, wait a minute that, you know, like what, you know, what if someone came no. under the bed and got me? Like he would have never known. Oh, I know. No, you would have been like dragged away by like, you know, the fairies or the aliens or something. And he would have just been sleeping peacefully in his bed, safe from monsters. I had a uh, reoccurring or dream. There was a book that I had as a really little kid and it had like these very detailed drawings of like werewolves and vampires with like lights mm. in the eyes. And so they oh. would glow. And I would have this reoccurring dream about being like, uh, kept in a vampire's lair and that vampire from the book was in my dream and i had this really bad fear of like uh vampires basically as a as like a very small child i grew out of that but yeah, yeah. if anything was going to come get me it was going to be that vampire because i also did not like having my window uh curtain on my window i wanted my window open because i didn't want to have to look like open it and see something on the other side I, you know oh that yeah it always really bothered me Oh my gosh. So I actually was in a way kind of opposite. Like I wanted my windows covered because I had a fear of aliens. Okay. <laughs> so that was, that was my terrifying fear. See, I grew up in fantasy and not okay. like, like so sci-fi and alien stuff didn't really come into my conscious until probably 17 or like, well, like 16, 17 was when okay. I started like encountering alien stuff. But before that it was all horror, like medieval horror and fantasy. That was my big See, thing as a kid. I read those things as a kid, but they didn't frighten me. Like I, like when I was a kid, I was reading like uh, Christopher Pike's The Last Vampire series. Mm -hmm. so I liked like, it, but I think when yeah. whenever it came to the idea of something like coming and getting me, because that was all I read, mm -hmm. that's the the shape it took in my mind. But I wasn't necessarily afraid of those things. It okay. was just whatever I was afraid of was probably going to be in that shape. Does that make sense? Okay, it does. Yeah, I just, I guess, like, even though I didn't read about aliens, they still, for some reason, scared the crap out of me. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Like, uh, most of my stories that I read were about, like, witches, vampires, ghosts. I mean, I read Benicula, who didn't. Oh, best, yeah. Man. Best kid Benicula story ever, you great. know? So, like, I, I loved all that stuff, but, like, it never came to me like as a scary thing now one horrifying nightmare actually involved the honey nut cheerio bee and that is a story <laughs> for another time okay. so i do know what you mean about how like things just get into your conscious and mm -hmm. just become like the the thing in your nightmare even though you're not normally scared of it right yeah yeah no i, I totally get it <laughs> but um oh god yeah that <laughs> that bee was horrible it murdered my parents oh wow <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but uh, oh god where, where the hell was i so uh yeah we were on the floor sleep okay we're about to sleep right yeah. okay so 
We both lay down. Jen like falls asleep right away. And I don't know. I am probably still wide awake because I was like still terrified about the angel thing, but I had not fallen asleep yet. And um, I remember just kind of like looking around the room, la la la. And, you know, I look up and to the left <laughs> and like up in like this corner, like, you know, because her bed's behind me. And so up into like this corner is this ball of red light. And it's like, like the size of like a mush ball. I don't know if you've ever played before, but yeah, it's bigger than a softball. Yeah. Like, like a cantaloupe, I guess. Okay. So like, yeah, like, can... like a cantaloupe. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's like this ball. It's a sphere, a sphere of red light, you know? Um, and I'm just like, what the hell? So like, at first I'm not freaked out. Like, I'm just kind of like, Oh, well, you know, I have this bottle of Mountain Dew Code Red because, oh God, I drink that stuff. I'm sure it's poison. Um, but, you know, I have Mountain Dew Code Red right there by my head that I've been drinking earlier. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe the moonlight from her window is reflecting off the Mountain Dew Code Red. And that's what's creating a sphere of light, which makes no sense because it should be a shaft of light, right? Yeah. You know, it's not going to create a sphere. So I'm trying to reason it though, you know, and as my eyes are drifting back down towards, you know, the Mountain Dew, I realize that right next to me, you know, like it looks like a figure squatting down, looking at me, but one, it's made entirely of green light. And so it's really not defined, like, but you can kind of get the vague sense of where arms and legs would be, but it's essentially just light. And there's nothing where the head would be. Like, all I'm seeing is like from the, uh, like the shoulders down, like I'm not seeing like any sort of light where the head would be, you know, and it's, and whatever this is, like, it would be a figure that'd be like three or four foot high, like, cause it was smaller than me. I'm five, two. So like this thing squatting next to me, I could tell was would be smaller than I would be if I was squatting next to myself, you know? And that's pretty much when I got absolutely freaked out. Like, I'm like, okay, what the hell is this? And this is the part where I'm going to actually take a look at my notes because I always mess up what side it touched me on. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I always, I always get back and forth. Um, but okay i think if i i think it touched me like a warm feeling on my left cheek but then over on um, my right rib cage it felt like cold and wet like something cold and wet had touched it and i don't know it's if never this- a good feeling no it's not <laughs> And I don't know if this matters at all, but the opposite side, my um, left rib cage, it actually sticks out farther than my right rib cage. Okay, my I rib- had a friend like right. that. Yeah, yeah. And it's very, it's very difficult when I wear corsets because, like, my left side always hurts, like, because it gets squeezed. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, the spot where it touched me on my lower right rib cage, it actually uh, it doesn't stick out as far as the left side. And I assume I've always been like that. And that didn't just like do some crazy, like uh, alien surgery on me, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just going to note that in case it means something. Um, but you know, that's the point where I was just kind of like, okay, this is, this is something going on. This is serious. This is like absolutely terrifying. And I looked over at Jen and she is dead asleep this whole time. I thought you were going to say she was dead. I'm like, no, oh my God. No. Oh my God. No. Uh, if she was, um, I think, I think this story would be in the newspaper. Um, no, but she is like, I mean, she is out and I like, I want to wake her up at the same time. I'm scared to like, you know, you get that feeling of like dread. Right. Yeah. 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 So I did what I think anyone would do. And I rolled over and I pulled the blanket over my head and I was like, Nope, Nope, Nope. I'm going to ignore this. We're going to just like try to fall asleep. And I'm just like, I am like this, you know, like arms over my chest, like, you know, blanket over my head. I shut, like, please make this go away. Please let me fall asleep. And I did, I did fall asleep. I, um, 
you know, I'm I'm very new to Solomonic magic, and yeah. I've been saying that once I start actually doing evocations, because one of the things that people will tell you when you do evocations is even if you have successfully banished it, whatever after you've finished the uh, the ritual. It, their legion can come and kind of like mess around with you for a week or so after the ritual was done. And so I was thinking, like, oh, well, if I get a blanket with the seal of Solomon on it and just hide under that, then they can't get me. It'll be perfect. I love your way of thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, sometimes um, I have a very childlike mind. You know, I, I don't want to tell this on air because it's not my story to tell, but um, I can edit it out if I, you want. Okay, I just, uh, I'm just gonna be brief, but my friend, my friend Liz was actually talking to me about some stuff that she was doing um, on the Solomonic side and how like, everything's fine during the ritual. But like you were saying, like, after the ritual is when things get kind of, yeah, yeah things like, get weird. Yeah. Hi, kitty. Hi, baby. So this is baby cat. And if you've listened Aww. to my appearance on strange familiars, this is the cat that caused tim to lose sight of whatever he saw at gazoo's woods oh really yeah this is the owl cat Uh-oh. yeah that's all right it's a very pretty cat yeah we kind of worship him he's like the uh the king cat in this house mm, gotcha that's how um that's how my cat who passed away he was okay. he was the prince oh yeah he was the prince and uh he actually, uh, I don't have time for this one, but he did save me from a shadow person. I, if we have time, I'll tell you that. Story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was, that was an odd one. That's the only time I've ever seen a shadow person's legs too. Um, I've okay. watched him play with spirits. I mean, I, I, I can't yeah. guarantee you that's what it was, but like, I've seen him play with some stuff that was not there. I swear, I don't think all cats are like that, but the ones that are, like, I am fully a belief that they, they can see and they can interact with stuff. Because, oh, yeah, he, like, talks. He's, yeah. He is the yeah. weirdest cat I've ever encountered. Like, I'm 90% sure he's not, like, an actual cat. Like, there's something yeah. much more ethereal within him. That's that's how I felt about my cat. Like, he, he was the smartest cat I have literally, like, ever encountered and i don't mean just like oh he could do party tricks i mean no he was like there was like an intelligence behind him even my mom said like he's a person and my mom hates pets like she well, she loves animals but she hates having pets in the house you know mm. and she was like that cat that cat is a person yeah he like talks yeah. to you like when he he's yeah. like what i think happens is like if i forget to uh refill their food bowl all mm-hmm. the cats will convene and he'll come to me as like the ambassador of all yes. the cats and he'd be like hey you need to refill our bowl like now yes that's exactly what estelle would do mm-hmm. oh my god yeah and uh i'm trying to figure out how to do this but i want to do an episode uh about like the etheric or magical properties of cats because i'm like pretty convinced that there are certain ones that are like fully tapped into this consciously a hundred percent like i still remember i was doing um some sort of ritual back at our old apartment and him that my cat that I was telling you about and one of our other cats who just walked into the room, they sat at like the points where like, uh, you know, cause I had like something for North, South, East and West. Right. The cardinal directions. And, yeah. And like they each sat at a cardinal direction and just stayed there at those points during the entire spell. And then they left once the spell was over. Yeah. So I, yeah, know, he hates it when I, vape, oh, yeah. when I vape near him, like he can't stand it. And normally oh, no. he runs away, but right now yeah. he's uh, on the, um, there's a box behind the computer and he's on top of it. Mm-hmm. And as you saw, I just took a hit and he just yeah. shot me this look like, don't you dare. <laughs> it's crazy. He's got the most communicative eyes. Anyway, I'm so sorry. Let's go back to your story. I I was going to talk more about cats. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Always. (laughs) No, my my cat actually would bully me to go to bed on time because I had to go by his schedule. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I know. I know. Oh, my goodness. Okay. No, but we will talk about cats later. Okay, great. We'll tell you more. Yeah, for sure. So we're at the point where I, I did fall asleep. I fell asleep, you know, with the blanket over my head important important detail right there so i wake up it's 
till the middle of the night. Um, at this point, Jen's parents are home. Um, so I, I, we don't know that yet, but you know, they are home and I am like, as I'm waking up, I'm, you know, still under this blanket and I can sort of feel like my mouth moving, like I'm saying something. And as I fully wake up and open my eyes, it stops and it stops before I can hear what I had been saying. Like, like my hearing comes online after Like I had already started waking up a little, you know, like I'm waking up in stages almost, you know? And so I'm like, wow, you know, in my head, like that was weird, you know? And then I hear Jen talking. And so I pull the blanket up to just enough so I can see her face. And like, she's like, she is like, still fully asleep and she's just laying there talking and like nothing is making sense like it's not english but it's just like allah ama mala blah blah like a lot of those kind of syllables like allah ma you know ha Mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm trying to like listen in like you know like i'm kind of straining to hear what she's saying because i'm like seeing if maybe I can recognize it as like, you know, a foreign language or something, right. you know, cause I, I'd had like a couple of years of Italian at this point. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I can figure out what you say. And, you know, but as I'm trying to like, listen in like my ears, like my, my ears just fill up with like, what sounds like radio static blocking out whatever she's saying. Interesting. And yeah, and this is where I said, like, okay, can I swear on this show? Because this, this is where it gets weird. Um, so they're filling up with radio static, and like as I'm hearing nothing but radio static in my head, I hear like what sounds like a deep male voice say, "You bitch, you bitch, you bitch," and I'm trying not to laugh because like who, no, who, yeah. who has a spirit experience where like it says that? Like right. it's just. I, it like throws it off like you know like the whole aesthetic of having like some kind of like crazy like you know spirit or fairy or, you know. experience yeah, yeah. So, yeah and then you hear like something that's so mundane and so crass so modern and, like, yeah. yeah exactly and i was just like what the hell but like at the time though it honestly just terrified me more because it's like you know here i am i mean not that there is like a human in the room, but it's a deep male voice. That's, that's scary to hear, you know? Yeah. So I'm staring at Jen just like, okay, now's a good time to wake up. Now's a great time to wake up. Like, cause after it said that, after it said, you bitch, you bitch, you bitch. Um, it just stopped. Like there were, my ears cleared up. I was hearing normally again, Jen was just normally asleep. Like it was like whatever had been there just left the house. So I'm waiting now at this point for Jen to wake up. And she does in like the next, I don't know, like couple of minutes. So as soon as she's up, I'm just like, Hey, Hey, look, I need to tell you what happened. Okay. And I also really need to pee and I'm not peeing alone. Okay. So I tell her, I tell her what happened. Like, you know, she's kind of, freaked out too there's a companion behind you hi baby you want to come on camera no all right that's uh yeah that's mimi okay hang on hang on let's see if i can so i have a cat hello oh she's beautiful thank you so we'll see how long she stays um (laughs) <laughs> but you can't see it, but baby cat has his uh, paw like right next to the camera. Aww. You got to give him little pets for me. Yeah, I will. There you go. Mm. <laughs> you can hear him Excellent. jingling. <laughs> so, um, so I told, I told Jenna what happened. I was like, you've, you've got to go to the bathroom with me. I am. I have to pee really bad and I'm not going by myself. Like there's, there's no way in hell. So, um, so we go to the bathroom and when we're in the hallway, we can hear that her dog is inside the bathroom. Now she has a tiny, tiny little thing. Um, it's like a papillon, you know, and this dog is like her parents' baby. Like 
they baby this dog. They let it, you know, sleep in its little bed or whatever. Like the fact that it's in the bathroom, it just, it doesn't make sense. Like why would they ever lock the dog in the bathroom, you know? So we're thinking, oh, it must've trapped himself in there somehow on accident, you know, because the light's off, you know, and why would they put the dog in there and turn the light off? Like, you know, and as we would find, there's like no food or water in there. So none of this is like adding up. So Okay, so this deep male voice. Let's get back to that. Oh, wait, wait. So we're, no, we're in the bathroom now. Oh, we're yes, in the bathroom. that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, okay, so we're in the bathroom, and the dog is in there. Okay, no food, no water, lights off. Its leash is still connected to it, which isn't super abnormal. Sometimes it runs around the house with its leash on and just, you know, whatever. Uh, but here's where it gets kind of weird. The leash is stuck under the toilet. And, like, we try to figure out, like, okay, could it have run around the toilet in a circle and, like, you know, the leash kind of got caught under as it was running in a circle? But we're, like, no. Like, even though this dog's small, it's not small enough to fit behind the toilet between the toilet and the wall. If it was a cat, maybe, because, mm-hmm. you know, cats are liquid. But, no, <laughs> like, there's there's no way. Like, so we're, like, how the hell did its leash get stuck under there? So, like, well, no wonder it's barking its head off. Uh, so, and, you know, it's barking its head off. And it's, and her parents are home and they, they're not checking on it. They're dead asleep this whole time, which I think is also a little weird, you know? Like, how can you not hear this? Because um, the bathroom is right by their bedroom. So anyway, Jen tries to, like, you know, pull the leash and, like, she couldn't get unstuck. Like, it took both of us with all our strength to get this leash pulled out from under the toilet. And, like, we took grouting out with it and everything. Like, you know, so this was, like, far, far under the toilet. I do not have an explanation for, like, how that happened. And that was kind of where the weirdness of the night ended, you know, at this point, you know, we went back to bed. Now the dog was rescued and everything. And um, in the morning, though, when we saw her parents, like, I remember trying to ask her mom, like, about the dog and, like, you know, what was going on with that. And her mom just kind of, like, was like, no, what? And just, like, brushed us off, like, as if she didn't know what we were talking about. Like, it was just, it was just a weird conversation. Like, I felt like I never got, like, answers. Yeah. Yeah, so honestly, like, I never really got satisfying answers for why the dog was there. No, I know what you mean. And that was my part one of my interview with Lindsay. I really enjoyed talking to her, and I think you're really going to enjoy part two as well. That will be a Patreon exclusive. The Patreon link is in the show notes below. With that, everybody, have a great night, and we will see you again very soon on The Strange Dominions.